Jermaine Defoe! Wrong! Like my first season getting called a one season wonder and all yeah. stuff like that. It, it Who called you that? You got a name? Who, which pundit <laughs> called you a one season wonder? It wasn't me. You're hurt. It's obvious. You're a Man United fan, you're no, hurt. No, I'm not hurt. Obviously, my team's up every week and you're hurt. I feel like Jerry Springer here. <laughs> Sent off for a stamp on Gareth Southgate. Yeah, and he deserved it. <laughs> I've never lost a fight. Think you ever will? I don't think I'll ever lose a fight, no. I don't think I will. I don't think there's nobody out there to beat me. That's not sure it's belly. <laughs> Big belly. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I'll go on to bed with a dick. No. <laughs> Does it annoy you? I mean, I, I, I've fallen into trap myself in the last ten years beyond television. This perception of Tottenham, when you, you are tough, you are a leader, you are resilient, you're an unbelievable player, score long goals, and then you get people calling the club whether it be flaky, you know, bottle it in big moments, that must really annoy you. It must be someone like you. Yeah, no, it's hard to it's hard to hear if I'm if I'm totally honest, you know. Like you say, we've we've been so close and, and things could have been a lot different. But I understand obviously we haven't got over the line. As a club, we haven't won things, we haven't been dominant when you could say we've probably had the best team we've had for a very, very yeah. long time. But for sure, you hear them comments and they kind of eat at you a little bit inside. But did they bite you? Did they? Yeah, did... They, they, they almost get you going a little bit. You know, it's, yeah. like, it's almost trying to prove people wrong. And, and, and that's been kind of me my whole career in, in all aspects, really. Like my first season getting called a one season wonder and all yeah. stuff like that. It, it kind of. Who it called proved... you that? You got a name? Which, which pundit <laughs> called you a one season wonder? You it wasn't might, me. You might call me that one day. <laughs> it wasn't me. I put you on no. corners, but I didn't call you a one season wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but no, all stuff like. For me, I'm, you, obviously, you've known me through for England and stuff. Yeah. Almost not like that pressure, but you know, it gets me going and it brings out the best in me. And yeah, when you hear stuff about your club, it's never easy. Of course, I know what it's like working day in day out, playing with the players, working hard in the gym, in training to to try and win stuff, to try and win trophies. Of course, it hasn't happened, but it don't mean we're not working as hard as anyone else. As a club, we just haven't been able to to get over the line. But I mean. No, it's been some amazing moments, some amazing years for, for the club. So there is some positives there, but of course, my profession is about winning. I want to win. Yeah. So it for sure grates at me that we haven't done that. What's most important to you? For me, is I, I don't want to have come to the end of my career and have any regrets. So I want to be the best I can be. I've said before, I'd never say I'd stay at Spurs for the rest of my career. I'd never say that I'd leave Spurs. I'm, I'm, I'm at that stage where you could say, you know, People might look at it as, oh, he's desperate for trophies, he needs trophies. I still, I still feel like I've got almost another career to play. I've got seven, eight years, yeah. kind of what I've had so far in the Premier League. So I'm not, I'm not rushing anything. I'm not desperate to, to do anything. But yeah, I just want to be the best version of me. And I feel like, for sure, I've still got so much more to give. I feel like I yeah. can be even better than what I've been. I can produce better numbers than what I'm producing at, at the moment. So Can you? I, I feel like I can. I've said before, and, and people, People are like, I'm someone who, I'm not afraid to say I want to be the best. I'm not afraid to say I want to try and get on the, the level that Ronaldo and Messi got to. Yeah. You know, that's, that's my ultimate goal. That's my aim is to be winning trophies season in, season out, scoring 50, 60, 70 goals season in, season out. And that's the standard I want to set myself because I feel like if I, I give myself anything lower, then I might get to the end of my career and be like, actually, I could have maybe done a little bit more. I could have scored a few more goals. So. That's my drive. The pressure from myself is always bigger than what any, anyone else can put on me. And, and then, like I said, I still feel like I've almost got another career to, to go and achieve what I want to achieve. Is that crossroad moments coming for you? I think so. I think it's definitely a conversation to be had uh, with the club. Yeah, like I say, I, I want to be playing in the biggest games, the biggest moments. Like I'm, this season, I'm there watching the Champions League, watching yeah. the English teams in there doing amazing. And they're the games I want to be involved in. I want to be at in them game. So for sure, it's, it's a moment in my career where I have to kind of reflect and, and see where I'm at and, and ha have a good, honest conversation with the chairman. And I hope we can have that conversation. And yeah, I'm sure he will want to kind of set out the, the plan of where he sees it. But ultimately, it's going to be down to me and how I feel and, and what's going to be the best for me in, in, in my career at this moment in time. I mean, obviously witnessed Alan Shearer's career and it almost mirrored mine in some ways. I never thought anybody would get near his record and I never thought anybody, to be fair, would go past Wayne Rooney's record, but you will. What can stop you? I guess injuries would be the biggest thing, obviously. I've had injuries, ankle injuries, and I haven't had anything that's kept me out for 
months and months, touch wood. But um, yeah, I guess for me, I think injuries would be be the biggest thing. Of course, it's always the, op the option of maybe moving abroad one day, but I don't think that's really interests me in the, in the near future. So um, yeah, in injuries, I guess, in, in my mind would yeah. be the only things. But like I said, I feel like I've got a good seven or eight years at the top. Yeah. When you look at kind of the Messi's, Ronaldo's, Lewandowski's, Ibrahimovic's, all kind of getting better as they get reach their early 30s. Yeah. I'm still 27, so I've still got a, hopefully a long way to go. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely there. I'm still obviously quite a ways off, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to think consistently I've scored 20 plus in my injury free seasons in the Premier League. So if I can do that for the next kind of four or five years, then then it'll be it'll be there but uh, you want them records though don't you yeah I'd, I'd be lying if i said i didn't i think if i get to the end and i and i haven't broke that record and and the and the rooney england record then i'd probably be a little disappointed in myself if i'm honest because it's definitely there if if i carry on doing what i've been doing so i guess yeah it'll just be a a great sign of consistency over many a years yeah. i mean Shearer's record is incredible when you think about it 260 goals so I guess it's just that little bit of motivation there just to push me and hopefully go beyond that yeah. and I know right that if I go into a big fight one of these guys and and he beats me then obviously I'm not good enough because I know that I put in that much work and I've sparred the best and I've done everything that I possibly can so if I lose to a better man on the night I shake his hand and say fair play pal you're a good fighter but they don't have that attitude because they want to make excuses why they lost or this was wrong, that was wrong, I've hurt my foot, I've hurt my leg, I've, I've had a bad training camp. And they can't face reality of what's happened. And that's it. But I've never lost a fight. So People say will. to me, I don't think I'll ever lose a fight, no. I don't think I will. I don't think there's nobody out there to beat me. They're all businessmen, like Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joe, whoever is in this era that I'm in, they're all about business. They're all about making money. They're all about doing other business ventures and being celebrities on telly. I want to be a movie star, I want to be this, I want to be that. And I'm just the same old G sitting here in Morecambe drinking me coffee. And I don't really care about all that sort of stuff, business and whatever. But I suppose, like, I come from like a business background. I was earning money at 12 years old. So for them, it's new. But for me, it's something that I've done all my life. My dream from being a little kid was to beat Klitschko. When I was only a young, Klitschko was a world champion, so I was always looking at him. And then when I'd completed it, it was game over for me. I didn't want to continue. Plus, I was mentally unstable. Like, going into that fight, I was very depressed and down and anxious. And I always, I always had that goal of beating Klitschko that kept me on the straight and narrow path. But after that goal was taken away from me, I had nothing else that I could focus on to give me that drive. And it was just like total downward spiral, and I just didn't want to live anymore. I was happy to die at 27. I was happy to finish, that was it. Nothing or nobody could bring me back. Not my wife and kids, didn't care, didn't care about nothing. Every day I woke up, I just wanted to die. It's just, it's a crazy way to be, but only people who understand, like, who's been through depression and all that sort of stuff will understand what I'm saying. And when you're so down and every day you wake up, even if it's sunshine and it's grey and you're negative all the time, and it, you, you're infectious, you infect people who are around you, make them negative and down and you push everybody away and you just want to be left alone, like in a dark corner and left alone. But my problem is I was eating as well, comfort eating. So I was just getting heavier and heavier and more down and depressed and depressed and down. And I never thought that I'd ever return to, to boxing or anything like that. I'd, the furthest I thought I'd ever go if I didn't die was padded room. What was you like at home with your wife at that time? Terrible, non-existent. I'd go out for days on end drinking. What would she do? Was she ringing you? She'd be ringing me. They'd, they'd be, I'd switch my phone off and they'd be thinking, right, he's killed himself now. He's gone. And they'd be phoning around everywhere, uh, looking for me. Have you seen Tyson? I can't hold him for two days and he, I think he's killed himself. Because I was always like, yep, yeah, this is the day I'm going to kill myself. And I even attempted it as well one day. And uh, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good um, time in my life. It was just dark, lonely, horrible place. And I never want to go back to, ever. I'm excited, but I get a little, always get a little bit sort of anxious, nervy before these interviews. I don't know, I can't stop thinking about his eyes. <laughs> Every time I look at a picture of him or a video of him, I just think his eyes and look, you know what I mean? It's like that, uh, that stare, that seriousness about him.
Потому что я буду вас трепать. И вас тоже. I got like a little nod. And then he killed me. <laughs> a little nod like he's gonna kill me. I back in my uh, my room. I, I read. I go on the phone. SMS. Bim bim. My wife. Start in war. I. Whew. Oh my God. I. I think. Hey, how I back in home? I call in Sergey. Hey Sergey, change please and. Uh, Ticket, maybe fly in the Poland. Yeah. I call in my friend. Hey, yeah. uh, go in a car in the Poland. Sit in the car. Go in the customs. Yeah. Into my, Ukraine. Yes, my friend. Call. Hey, uh, car and uh, wait you. Okay, no problem. We sit and uh, go in Kiev. Maybe um, 300 kilometers in Kiev. You know, it's uh, traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Back in Kiev. Yeah. Going and, this way? Yeah, going yeah. as uh, my car, it's one. Going this yeah, way? Yeah, it's going as you <laughs> go in Kiev. It's a uh, post and the uh, Polish and they stop. Hey, okay, okay. How, oh, Alex? Yeah. Where do you go? <laughs> I go home. Okay, okay. Uh, I go and uh, you know it's silence, it's you awesome. know, the silence and I silence. Yeah. Go my uh, my room, my wife. You back? Yes, I back. I kiss. Okay. I let them sleep. Maybe two, three hour. Yeah. Back. And bombs. Bombs. Yes. Uh, my uh, my friends. Forty one uh, people live in my uh, my house. Who who go in uh, in a birthday? Yeah. We live one month. I go in the army of Ukraine. I have my gun and I go. My wife, where you go? You go to fight? Yes, I go in the army. Yeah. Cra crazy, yeah. Yes. What do you make of the insult when he says your uh, he calls you rabbit? You call him belly. <laughs> Він каже, що коли Тоні назвав мене тиграм, а я сказав, що я білий кролік. Тоні Белю сказав, що це, типу, блін, це, це звір, це, це мощний тип. Я кажу, та ні, Тоні, ти що прикалуйся, я білий кролік. White rabbit. And then you call him Belly. Тайсон Фюрі – це Белли. Big belly. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're going to punch that belly? Yes, of course. <laughs> Every time. <laughs>Is Manchester City right now a cloud actually over the Premier League? You talk about sort of other clubs trying to compete with you. When they look Manchester back in years City were fifth in the Premier League, sixth in the Premier League, there's not half the amount of, of moaning oh, about of course. it. Because it's because we're winning. But at the end of the day, you look at the transfer window just gone. Transfer window used to be a great day. Some of us are oh, I mean, ringing sick at work. Transfer deadline day, we'd sit there, who are we going to sign? The biggest deal was a Formula One driver moving. It was 55 yeah. million. So they've even killed the transfer window. They've killed pre-season. I think the Premier League, from the outside looking in, is a mess. Yeah. And I think all this with Everton, Forest, Villa, what we said, is a mess. And I'm just waiting for the fair trial. And if we, we guilt it, I'll put my hands up and I'll, there'll be no... And you'll take all that back? <laughs> yeah, but I've got, I bought one in replica European Cup, so I'll lock myself in a room with that. And <laughs> take it away. That's, that's why I didn't want Qatar United, because I feel that fans end up parroting this this kind of state-sponsored PR and all these statements and stuff trying to defend your football club and that. And I get it, football fans are emotionally invested in their team, so they're going to do that. But it's, it's mad, isn't it? When you're trying to defend literal financial doping by a sports-washing state... It's alleged, to try and, it? It's alleged. It's, oh, come on, bro. Are, are, you a, are you a lawyer? Bro, are you, are you, you just sat there and defending them? Are you a lawyer? No, I've just said... Everyone, I've just bro, said the alleged OJ, I know much about it as you know. You OJ, know nothing and I know nothing. All right, nah, Simple. City's, City's success is, you're just is a, you're, spot on. No, you're, listen, Come on, bro. You're hurt. You're a Man United fan, you're no, hurt. No, I'm not hurt. City Obviously, my team's crap. Every week and you're hurt. But I'd rather be beaten by Liverpool that is genuine success than just 
then just dope. It's, it's literally you're losing against someone. Well, isn't it open to that juice now? in breath? That's what everyone's These have spent a billion pounds. They've spent a billion pounds because about... they're not winning. Apparently, it's our fault. It's but easy. The money, we know where the money comes feelings. from, and I'd, ne I'd never defend the Glazers. I'd feelings. never defend the Glazers, though, just like I wouldn't have defended us if we got Qatar. You had a march you're sat here going. You had a march for Qatar going, outside your stadium. But you sat here and went. You had a march for Qatar outside the stadium. You can't say you because Justin. I wasn't there. And there's probably Justin. about a couple of hundred people. Well, there's but always a couple of hundred people, even Glazer out probably. You know a couple of hundred people at City. You know what I mean? But, um, but <laughs> how, can, how can you sit there and go, we're not state owned, but you literally called them Etihad? You literally called your team and the owners a state? Who did? You, just then when you were talking, you, you said... sponsor, the you, and that, um, you, you also referred to the owners as a state, but... but I feel like Jerry Springer, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> right, your dad's here today. Ted, come on, in you come. Ted, in you come. Come and stand around here. Oh, Teddy, Teddy. I'm going to say sorry for anything <laughs> he says. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get legals out. Not swearing. All right, I'll try not to. Ted, you watched him every single step of the way, and you must be so proud, obviously, now the film's coming out this week. It must be good to reflect upon everything that's happened. Yeah, it's been, it's been an absolutely wonderful career for him. And uh, as a dad, I mean, there aren't many dads that um, wish their son like, you know, had a son like him. I mean, he's been brilliant, and uh, his career's been correct. Mm. Where, does he get the Where does he get the stubbornness from, yeah. Ted? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously from me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now he's uh, he's a good lad. Mm. <laughs> Just talk to us about obviously family, and you know you've obviously travelled all around the world, but you're probably more settled now than you've ever been in terms of obviously finishing your career. Mm. Yeah, I've always said, and it's like everyone, you know, my family is the most important thing to me. You know, as, as much as I love football, as much as I've had, obviously, the career that I've had and played for the teams that I've played for, my number one thing is always my family. But like, like my dad, you know, my dad talks about, my mum and dad never missed a game. You know, no matter where I was playing, apart from obviously LA, it was a little bit too far from East London for them to travel every, every weekend. But other than that, they were at every game, every youth team game, every reserve team game, like your mum and dad were, you know, and, and the community that we had, you know, at that time, you know, in, you know, in the youth team, it wasn't just us that were friends and teammates, it was our parents as well that all hung out, they all went on holiday together, they all travelled together, and it was a special thing. But the family part for me is, is, is the most important thing. What, what, what's your thoughts, Ted, in terms of obviously now your <coughs> football career's finished? I will say, you know, everybody goes on about Cantona, but this man here. You, oh, you, you're too you, kind. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he means you, his lads. <laughs> <laughs> but the team wouldn't have won so much if it hadn't been for him, because I've watched, I've got probably 1,300 videos of David's games and whatever, and England games. Um, but especially Man U, and this, this man here, he, he worked his socks off for the team. Mm. And it proved, you know, when, when he got booked <coughs> against Juventus, you know, he still played like he, you know, was going to play in the final. But it's been incredible. Um, football to me has been my life, and uh, I've been there for him, mm. and, you know, vice versa. Um, but... Uh, it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, you, you support your kids, mm -hmm. um, and that's what me and his mum have done. Uh, it's a beautiful place to finish, and all the best to you. Thank you, uh, With the film, and thank you very much for coming on. Nice Thanks. one, Bex. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. How Roy, many have you had, Roy? Which one of yours are we going <laughs> to... Which one? How many times have you sent off? Not that many. Oh. No, I think seven. Let's go seven, seven or eight. Six. All right. That's a lot, It's got to be bro. more than no, that. No. For no, a midfielder, not... for a combative midfielder, yeah. it's not a lot. I'm here in Seven. 13. <laughs> You're <hearing> wrong. <laughs> you want to send off? Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> How many times has Roy sent off? Do we have any stats on this? We've definitely got. I want to say seven or eight. We've definitely got eleven. Roy, so let's just let's just let's work through a, these now. Let's have a work through. If I'm wrong, I won't have any kick. <laughs> right, the first one was the FA Cup final. Uh, FA Cup final. final. Semi-final. Villa Park sent off for a stamp on Gareth Southgate. Yeah, and he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> still get red. So you're you're going to comment on all of them? The second one. Yeah, was on his back. Wait, you always say the defenders never be uh, on your back. You know what I mean? Always be on your feet. <laughs> What's the second one? Second one. Second one, 1995, August 28th, early in the season, Blackburn at Ewood Park, dismissed in an ill-tempered I was unlucky match. with that one. <laughs> no, I was. 
That was two yellow cards. <laughs> Second one was for diving. When I was taken on for, I think it was a penalty. You dived. No, I didn't dive. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> the third one. The third one. The Premiership versus Middlesbrough Old Trafford. Yeah, King continued strike, to be dogged yeah. by a red mist and he was sent off for the third time in six months. Yeah, that was, that was a bit silly. Fjord top. Remember the striker? Fjord top. Yeah. 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 What did you do? I tried to punch him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really good. I think we won that. I think we won the game. <laughs> tried to punch him, did you? Did I didn't connect with really. <laughs> Uh, fourth one, the Premiership versus Southampton at yeah. the Dell. Yeah. Uh, Keane was sent off again as United lose 6-3. Right. What were you sent off for then? I didn't know you looked I played the game. Off in that I, game. I, I played the game. Well, you were old. I don't remember. Okay, you <laughs> you look all out scores. there. Yeah, you played well, obviously. You gave up six. <laughs> I know. It was a kit, though. It was a kit, so... You I feel like we're in court and you're reading out one? allegations. Yeah. How, how this many is his rap sheet. Where are we now? Is that four? That's, that's four. That's four. The fifth one is the, ninth, the, the FA Cup semi-final at Arsenal at Villa yeah. Park, yeah. where it says you were somewhat, Keane was somewhat unfortunate was to be sent off exactly. two bookable offences. Exactly. Was one of them Mars? No, no. He came over and tackled over Mars. yeah. I think I was covering for you again. I know. And that was Ellery. Ellery set me <laughs> up four Ellery. times. Yeah. Did you have a bit of a beef with Ellery? A bit. He was. I think. Was he a school? Was he yes, a principal? I had a problem at some, with Ellery. At some posh school. Yeah, Harrow. Harrow. Is it? And he had yeah. that look over me. He was. Yeah, he had that same with me. <laughs> Irish. T I was definitely looking down at me. Because <laughs> I was thinking. Yeah, I like, said to him, "Book me." You've been in the tunnel before the game. Stars going now. He's going to book me. He set me up <laughs> three or four times. Like a class system thing. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. He was looking down at me. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I've, I got the same vibe from Thanks. Ellery. Thanks. Yeah. Without a doubt. There you go. We were all right with Harrow work, were we? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Ellery, yeah. 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 Quick, uh. Six one, the Premiership versus Newcastle at St James's Park. Keane was again zero. dismissed for collecting two yellow cards. Yeah. I saw him losing that. I, just... yeah. no, you I saw it. that one. So you you proper lost one. it then, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, did. But do you know what? That was more with the team as well than. Our team or your uh, our team, team? Just we gave away a goal, I think, towards the end. I think, I don't know if you were playing, but Wes, Wes was poor for the goal. I remember I was, I was more angry at Wes. Mm. I'm sure I hope Wes was playing. And, and then, you know when they wouldn't give you the ball back yes. one of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he's trying to get the, get ball. the ball back. Yeah, We're seven in. Did I, I think, <laughs> anger management classes started by then? One, well, that's it. The seventh, uh, Charity Shield versus yeah. Chelsea at Wembley. Oh, yeah. A red card for a reckless challenge yeah. on Gus Poyet. Yeah. Was it reckless? What's yeah, it was. You? But I enjoyed that stage it. Of the season, why are you that ang What are you doing? This is, this is Charity Shield. This is yeah, the but enemy. Enemy. we have to put a marker on early in the season. Jesus what God. part of the game was that early on in the game? I'm the not final? Sure. I'm not sure. Did you win it? I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> he didn't care. What was the challenge, if you don't mind me asking? I think he was shielded, and I think I just, just went up yeah, and just. I know, I think oh, right down the back of the car. Oh, yeah. 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 Sore ones. Oh. Jesus. Shame. Uh, eighth, the Premiership, Premiership, Premier League versus Manchester City at Old Trafford. Oh, course, yeah. A straight red for a disgraceful knee high <laughs> foul on Alfie Harland. I'm just reading out the description of what was on the papers at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you, you didn't help either. I didn't help with what? Running off to the lines, man, <laughs> saying it's only a yellow. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> It's true. Did isn't you? It? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gary ran over going, it's only a yellow. So when you say that to an official, he's going to go, well, that must be a red. <laughs> Why would you say, it's only a yellow? Don't even book me. So <laughs> I'm, I'm at fault for basically your being sent off. But I, 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 mean, I don't think that tackle was that bad. I really don't. I know it looks bad. You know what a player does a somersault? Yeah. But, it, it, yeah. but the damage is... Yeah. It was knee high though, wasn't it? Yeah, but I was never going to injure him in that tackle. You can't injure a player with that type of tackle. As we know, if you play the game, you know when a fella's trying to injure a player. Yeah. It's just the fact when someone does a somersault, it looks kind of worse mm. than what it was. And it was a city game, and it was a rubbish game, and it was a bit... I think we were all frustrated. I think we'd just been knocked out of Europe mm. a couple of days before it. So... I remember watching you walk off as well. And I'd been sent off. You no, know, I'd got injured. I'd done my crew shit up at Leeds. Mm. And people With tend to forget. Against him? Yeah. Well, like, obviously, I tried to trip him, and again, players... He was stood over me when I'd done my cruciate, which was a bad injury, and he was saying some nasty things when I was injured. And I just thought, listen, well, obviously, we'll meet again, you know? What's the ninth? Because, like, no. Tom Parsons <laughs> said... No, no, no. This is going to have to be an Eighth. extended episode. We're, at We're at ninth. We're at ninth. We're at ninth. 2001, Premier League, Newcastle at St James's Park, dismissed for a second successive season at St James's Park for throwing the ball at Alan Shearer. He then made an attempt to lash out at the striker as he made his way off the field. I thought that's... I thought that was the one we were talking about earlier. No, no, the one, right. the one earlier was for two yellow cards. All oh, right. Okay. So no, yeah, that was the one I was angry you with. Forget, Wes and the, the, you forgot. Yeah. You forgot one. 
Right. Oh, and there's, I forgot, there's Porto as well. So there is more than seven. Ten. Ten. Tenth. Remember you said there's no uh, way sen- 13. Remember you said that. <laughs> Go on. It's, not it's definitely not 13. Go on. <laughs> Sent off by Uriah Rennie in injury time of the one-all oh, yeah. draw after elbowing yeah. Jason McAteer following a number of heated exchanges yeah, throughout the that, game. Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah, but I should have. Okay, he deserved that. Jason McAteer. But he was your Irish teammate, colleague. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I wouldn't go that far. Were you mates or not? Absolutely not. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> just because you play with somebody doesn't mean you're your mates. Is yeah, but at international level. Oh, again, do you know what? What you see at the media players? Players who showed their moats off. Yeah. Right. I didn't mind lads kicking me up. Booting me, I, honestly. But McIntyre, as usual, had, had plenty to say for himself. Yeah. So, but I didn't even. I, I didn't deserve to be sent off in that game. Absolutely not. If you ever look back at it, I didn't even catch him. Yeah. Eleventh. Wow. Uh, February twenty fifth, two thousand three. Champions League versus yeah. Porto oh, at Stadio it. de Dragao, with his side trailing two one in the first leg of the first knockout round. The red mist descended for Keane again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to antagonise you, but it's just the reports. <laughs> it sounds like you're enjoying it, don't you? It's brilliant. This With four brilliant. minutes remaining, the Irishman need, 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 under goalkeeper. needlessly trod on the Porto keeper, Victor Bay, Bow, Bay, as he tried to chase down a loose ball. I think I remember that one. I think I was playing. Yeah. No, that was... I, I felt bad after that one. That, did, that, that is leaving, letting the team down. Yeah, what's that? When he's, when he's, when he's going, obviously he's the captain... How are you feeling? Because you're seeing him like, oh, what's wrong with him? Did you, can you say something to him when you get in the dressing room? Did you say anything? Did any of you not say anything? Truthfully, right. No, no, oh. listen, I wasn't, I, I couldn't take criticism, but any time lads came in or the manager came, I would be feeling bad, don't worry. I, I wouldn't be sitting there going, like, relaxed about it. So I think the players would recognise when someone's feeling bad and going, yeah. there's no point in going there. Did you, the apologize, man, did you apologize? I'm not sure. I, might, I must have apologized once or twice. The manager would some t- the manager would say something like, <laughs> "What the hell?" If, if he thought it was like a needless send off, like me at uh, yeah. Tottenham against Gil Nilla, yeah. it, it was stupid. I mean, I'd already I was already on a booking, and I went for mm. him a second time. Gary, what the fucking hell are you playing at, son? Mm. That, that that's what you'd get. And yeah. That was it. Better be it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, the guild would be kicking in. You're right. Yeah, the, I think the guild, manager massive guild. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. feel terrible. It's yeah. Sometimes the, the, the fact, sometimes right, the manager when the manager used to come in and say nothing to you, that the, that's that's, that's oh, really yeah. worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just yeah. look at it with disgust, and you're like, yeah. Yeah. I think it's all back then. There's not the WhatsApp group where you get home and write a big long message of apologies. Yeah. Is that what happens? Yeah. Sometimes I, I think you get that on a night oh, that no. you get home and you're like, oh look, I'm really. No, sorry. but no players ever either come in and had a go at me. To be fair. No, but, but I, don't I think, think yeah, I'd have got other players. But we never done that. No. We never come and have a go. Even when Eric done that, where Eric kicked the fan, yeah. none of us ever came in after the game. Eric, you're a bit what old. Did you, you, what, what, what happened? Did you know what happened that night when Eric kicked the fan? Yeah, what you Straight, in real time. That. Yeah. Because yeah, he was, was he was just being substituted. Yeah, and again we talk about anger and the emotion, and that we, that's why we all played the yeah. game. And Eric was obviously been been sent off, hadn't he? Yeah. yeah. And he's walking off, and, and that happens. That, in the moment, you don't, that's the last thing. This is what I'm saying. So I can't even compute why I've done that to the referee. Yeah, like, like, when you're going off and then all of a sudden he shouts what he shouts, that's it. Was the 18,000 fine? Was that the damage to the referee's room or your wage? <laughs> <laughs> I just keep picturing him with this little you know, portable um, TV. <laughs> you know what? I was trying to, at the time, I was trying to think with my agents. I wanted to pay them. <coughs> I wanted to pay them in pound coins. Eighteen thousand pound coins because you have to pay it yourself out of your own account. And they want it, and I was desperate to do it. But like at the time, the manager I was with, he said you can't do that. That's thing. I was so angry. I could not get over the anger of that one. Okay, so going back to Roy, Roy, we can't. So on, I, got, I got sent off once for Ireland. So there you go. That's twelve. And we think there's thirteen, but we can, we've only got. We've I only, said I told you we've only got 13. twelve at the moment. Yeah, it's not thirteen. One of the most sort of. Um, like incredible things that I heard, I've heard you say since you left, and you've not done many interviews, was around yeah. that a couple of players had said that they didn't want to be captain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was... A, well, we always talk about leadership, don't yeah. we, at Manchester United? Where yeah. are the leaders? Where are the people who have sort of got... Per- and I'm trying to get into a situation whereby how do you get to a point in your career as a football player where you don't think it's a good idea to take the captaincy of one of the greatest clubs but in the that world? But wasn't, that wasn't... No one said no to be the club captain. It was just in certain games. So they said, I don't want to be captain for this match. Yeah. But they didn't oh. want to say it themselves. They've got other people coming up to me and say that. Wow. So, what, their representatives? 
Hey? The representative. No, they're uh, no some what are, other coaches. The lads, like, our coach, Jesus. Like, as you do, you don't go up to the manager do you, yourself. You, you get someone else to do it for you. So do they? That's a bit oh, no. Yeah. No, you did, no, you don't. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. No. It's it's a different generation, and I, it is a complete. What do you think Generation of that, Z, Gen yeah. Z. You what, know. What do you think when they when they done that, Ollie, and then someone comes up? What's your initial reaction to? No, it's like he wow. actually doesn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's one. It's. Petty, too, it's like... Yeah. Lacks ambition. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Lacks, do you think that's Do you know what it makes me feel? It makes me feel a little bit... It makes me feel a bit worried for them. In the sense that what state of mind are they in yeah. Yeah. to actually turn down one of the greatest sort of accolades that you can possibly have? And actually, I don't think of it as being, oh, the they're weak. Or that. Yeah. I think they must be really in a bad place to actually be, sh to be yeah. shrinking place, almost. And, in, to, yeah. bottle, to bottle it. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, some it's strange, and I don't think we would understand, but... So many players, or many players, said no to do the pre-match interview. Mm. So you you had the, always the go-to. The three questions. I mean, those yeah, three, the yeah. three questions. I mean, but you you have the go-tos. Yeah, Bruno always did it. Harry always did it. Victor did it. Scott McTominay did it. Yeah, David, David did it. Yeah. Luke Shaw did it. So, so you have the saying, but the other no, I'm worried about the questions before. So. I'm, Prefer not to do it. It's like Ollie. Do you think that is them as individuals, or just yeah. the negativity around? Actually, you know, it's Manchester United. Everything I say, everyone picks yeah. up on it. I think they're it's actually both. scared of criticism. It, it's it's a game. bit of both. Yeah. It's a bit of both because you're scared of the whole reaction, maybe. But, but it, and you understand players, the mental health. Some of them, mm. I've dealt with more mental health problems in staff and players than could be. I couldn't say anything mm. of that here. Imagine a young kid and then you're getting the captaincy yeah. of Man United. It's a dream come true. Yeah. Like it's it's really sad that that's where kind of the game yeah. had gone it's to. Scared. Do you know what it I mean? Is. Like yeah. scared to take yeah. it, I suppose. Yeah. Surely that's got to be part of the recruitment, and it you find out what you're dealing with in a player because at some stage, especially if you're gonna sign for United um and a club of that stature, you you've got to have a player, any player, you don't know what could maybe have the character in the to, to end up in a personality to be a captain. So if you've got somebody... But that's where that character really yeah. comes into when you're playing for the big clubs. Mm. Is that bit of character? Again, I always talk about, about wanting the ball when you've got 70, 80 toes and when you're losing a home. Yeah. That's, to me, that's bravery. That's where the character comes in. Because yeah. all these players, you yeah. just are certainly talented. We've seen them at the big clubs, but it's just the bit underneath that is that personality. You know when you're talking about traits. sort of maybe mm. mental health problems yeah. as yeah. well as not just sort of yeah. mentality as a yeah. footballer? I mean, I'm just... Thinking of ourselves here, obviously we do big Manchester United games. You're the manager, yeah. we're, we're given big opinions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and probably we say things and probably don't realise yeah. the effect maybe it has on players <laughs> and certainly social media. I mean, how are we, are you yeah. or the dressing room of things getting picked up by we say? And do you think that does affect players? Definitely, hundred wow. percent. You know, when you obviously when you criticise players or teams, tactics uh, or talent, but when you when it goes above that, Somewhere it else. it is because there's so many around who watch this, listen to this, and then they, they're they on the social media, on the Twitter and all this. And yeah, they're right. And the, if they don't read it or hear it, yeah. friends, yeah. agents, managers, even even here, you can't even turn up here without agents and managers. Some of you, I don't know who. Is it, 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 it when it goes away from sort of <laughs> tactical when it games, goes to, about, about person, person, character? Uh, if we said someone was lazy or yeah, if that yes. type. Uh, but laziness, that's lack of leadership. There's, I think they they listen and think about it more than we than you yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> Right, if you get one right, no, you win I this. Like, you win this round. Go on, do it. No, no, no. no. Right, I'm, no. it's my gift. I'm too excited. It's my <laughs> gift. Too excited. Right. It's my <laughs> gift to you. No, it's my no, gift. Have it back. Should I take the gift you, back? Please. Jermaine Defoe. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Trophy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my word. Is that oh, it? That it? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on! Oh, no.
We didn't shake their hands. Yes. We didn't shake their hands. Come on, show it. Humble and victory. All the best. Feet. All the best next year. All oh, the best next year. Oh, yeah. Righty. Oh. Like you were on there ready. as well, pal. Yeah, I didn't oh, want to yeah, say we myself. I didn't want to say myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were saving I didn't that. want to say myself. On the... Right, I want a replay of him saying Lampard. I, can, I, can you send I, it I through? Don't said I don't believe he said did Lampard. say Lampard. Please, that was I want the one that I got Lampard. Lampard. I said I Lampard. Off straight away. Actually, I'm not sure I said Lampard. Come on. Gentlemen, who's taking it home first? <laughs> yeah, he's I think Roy should have. He's a captain. Oh, he's a captain. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Honestly, what Great what quizzing. Is. Just went at the end, though, though. Just went at the they end. Had a, they had us They had us the round they before, just, I think, uh, Pad. I'm not. Do you like it. Arsenal? You just ran out of steam. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Two injuries. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the suspension. You yeah, have all the mention in Arsenal like that. No, why would this year? Turned to each other. Well, congratulations on being the winners of the first ever football cup. Did he say Gary? Well done, lads. Hey, oh, um, one sec. 50% sure oh, I said. Are you going to let that go or what? Uh, at least they're not competitive. <laughs> That's the main thing. They've settled down a lot since they've retired. Not competitive in the slightest. <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic. Brilliant. Ian? Yes. I'm going to start with you. Lovely. OK. Who was your secret Santa present to be gifted to? Jill Scott. Oh. OK. Oh, easy. Should I give it to her now? Perfume. It has to be. Yes. <laughs> and, and the criteria <laughs> was that it had to be <laughs> under, under 20, pounds. 20 pounds. Yeah. 20. The only thing you can buy a woman is perfume. Yeah. There you go, Jill. Lovely. Oh, thank you uh, so you much. It. Thank you. Did you actually go and buy this? Yeah. Oh. Oh. That went and sorted that. Yeah. You've wrapped it and everything. I haven't well, even wrapped know. mine. Have a get. Have a look at it. It's oh. called oh. Snugsy. Who the hell's that? <laughs> look, no, it's so, it's so. It's <laughs> <laughs> Take it out so we can oh, see what it is. That's it so that's lovely. Oh. <laughs> Little Teddy. To be fair, when I see you, I give all these a cuddle and you never give us a hug. So a now hug. I can give you a hug. No, 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 at home. I, I, I'm not, that, that's not my scene. Look. Oh. oh. Yeah, that, <laughs> are you happy, Jill? Yeah. No, no, your face. Gonna, really I'm, I'm, I made sure I use the eyes as well. Look how weird. Oh, look thank how, you so much. <laughs> you like that? You like that, didn't you? Oh. It's nice. It's the only time I'll be going well, to bed. you know, 20 quid. I think I'm... I, I want to know where the facial's from. <laughs> He's just got that text off my no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> The only time I'll be going to bed with a dick. No. <laughs> <laughs> God, you got That's me. the end of the episode. That's it. That's it. That's, it. That's done. We've completed podcasts. <laughs>